Greetings and welcome to Walden's Pond on this 24th day of January 2010. Can you believe it? I'm Shelton Walden, your host and producer of Walden's Pond, the weekly radio program heard every Sunday between 1 and 2 p.m. We discuss health, culture, politics, and so much more. And on this overcast Sunday afternoon in the great city of New York City, we will revisit an issue that we've discussed often here on this program, the issue of circumcision, some of the latest developments. We'll be talking with the founding executive director of Intact America, Georgian Chapin. She is live in the studio. She'll be talking about what's happened in the six months since Intact America was founded, some of the developments in the news and in the medical field regarding circumcision, press coverage about the issue, and other very relevant details that you will find most interesting. That and so much more on this edition of Walden's Pond. Stay tuned. Back to Walden's Pond on this day, indeed, and we're glad to be here every Sunday at this time. Last week, we had an extensive conversation about with you on the telephone about Haiti and about the um, tragedy that is unfolding down there. We took some of your phone calls, took a lot of phone calls, and we appreciate the listeners calling in and supporting us and supporting this program and giving your thoughts on the issues of the day. Letting you know that in a couple of weeks, we'll be, we'll be back here, we think, with a membership drive special on uh, February 7th. So stay tuned for that because the membership drive here at WBAI begins on February 3rd here and will last throughout the month of February. So please honor us with your dollars and keep this radio station afloat in these very troubled economic times. Uh, you can call me off the air, 212-209-2984, 212-209-2984. You can email me at sheltonwalden at gmail.com, sheltonwalden at gmail.com. I want to note, let you know that uh, uh, a longtime producer here at WBAI, Marjorie Moore, passed away on uh, in early January, I believe January 4th, and there will, there will be a memorial service uh, at the Riverside Church next Saturday at 1 p.m., uh, Marjorie Moore used to host a number of programs here on WBAI, including Talk Back and Talk More. She used to host the morning show here and um, was very active in a number of important social issues. So she uh, unfortunately has, uh, unfortunately has passed at um, in, on January 4th. You may remember her, Marjorie Moore, here on WBAI. Very finally, she had many, many fans and many listeners. So that will be next um, Saturday. Uh, the 30th of January at the Riverside Church. Okay, it's 106 here on WBAI, and without any further ado, we'll talk, we'll have a discussion about the issue of the moment here on Walden's Pond, that is the issue of circumcision. As you know, for the past uh, 15 years on this show, we have uh, covered this issue and te- taken a look at it, and it's uh, one of those issues which... Uh, uh, always starts up a tremendous amount of controversy and discussion, particularly in the last several years on the Internet. And uh, this uh, subject, of course, is uh, is always uh, yeasty because it involves children, it involves rights of children, and it involves uh, 
well, some of the most intimate uh, parts of the human body, which um, unfortunately for many people, uh, uh, many, many people feel that uh, are, should be left alone and uh, should not be tampered with. But uh, here, uh, many people, parents particularly, are pressured into circumcising their children because they're told that this is a good thing to do. And, of course, we um, here, we've taken a position that uh, this is not a good thing to do. Indeed, it's a violation of many rights, fundamental human rights, in particular human dignity in particular. So, that being said, um, I'm pleased to uh, bring back a, a visitor to this program who was a guest here last year. And honored to have her here, indeed, uh, George Ann Chapin, who is the founding executive director of a well, relatively new organization, which is uh, enjoined in uh, combating uh, the, the many myths and stereotypes, and also educating the public uh, about the positive benefits of being intact, uh, particularly if you're a male in this country. I'm talking about George Ann Chapin, and I'm pleased to have her back here on Walden's Pond. Hi. Hi, Shelton. How are you? Good. How are you? Great. Really an honor for me to be here. Of Thank course. you so much. Honor to have you here. And honor to, honor to know you and uh, pleased to know that Intact America is out and about. And yes, indeed. we are. Yes. And last time you were here, I don't believe we, the organization was uh, uh, was uh, was about to uh, embark on some new adventures. Uh, and and uh, we had a founding press conference here in New York uh, back in the, in the spring. And ever since then, you've been mighty busy. So it, it, just if you could explain a little bit about Intact and then explain to the audience what you've been doing since then. Sure, great. Well, Intact America uh, actually was, was the coming together of a large grassroots movement against infant circumcision that has been really around in, in the United States since the 1970s. There are a number of organizations and lots of people who have spoken out on an individual basis and on a collective basis against this really horrifying medical practice of, of taking a perfectly healthy baby and cutting off uh, his body part when he's a day old. That's that's infant circumcision. Uh, it was felt that that with the sophistication of the Internet and the um, the ability for people to really communicate much better electronically now that there needed to be one organization that could invest considerably in this public messaging. And through the generosity of an individual, of a private donor, and with the support of all the grassroots organizations that have been working on this issue over the years, we were able to form Intact America. Actually, officially in 2008, we really grew our, sprouted our wings and started to fly in 2009, as you mentioned, with an official press conference in New York. Our website, www.intactamerica.org, is uh, quite sophisticated, and we have just had a, a really amazing year where we've gone from being newcomers, official newcomers to the issue, to really being the voice of the opposition uh, to circumcision, to infant circumcision in the United States. Because of the world uh, pressures right now, because of, of all of the hype about uh, circumcision as a so-called preventive for HIV in Africa, Intact America has also been weighing in on the international issues. But we remain primarily a U.S.-focused organization really trying to, sh to shine the light on this custom, this um, medical industry of removing healthy infants' body parts, and the seemingly endless quest to justify uh, a practice which if it were proposed today, sort of out of the blue, no one would have any trouble seeing as a massive violation of children's rights and mm -hmm. human rights. Mm -hmm. Well, absolutely. And um, it, uh, like you mentioned, it, 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 what you were just saying now, the endless justification, I think that uh, over the years, um, and, and uh, my studies and research over this issue, uh, and also uh, talking with people like Frederick Hodges, who is a you know, medical historian who... Uh, wrote a book about this uh there's been endless reasons over the years to um, justify this and now of course uh hiv uh preventing hiv is the latest reason to uh, circumcise and indeed um uh, before i came on the air 
there was a report out of South Africa that after 200 years, uh, one particular part of a Zulu tribe uh, in uh, in uh, South Africa will circumcise again. Right. And uh, because they, uh, citing uh, these studies, they say we believe that circumcision will help in reducing HIV infections. Um, this is, uh, they have a massive male circumcision program before the end of the year to help prevent the spread of, of HIV. And so the... Uh, the uh, the pro uh, circumcision uh, side has been active uh, in spreading this. Uh, some would say a myth uh, mm. that uh, this is a good thing to prevent uh, uh, HIV or prevent uh, any sort of uh, disease. Yeah, you know it's it's fascinating how uh, how we don't realize any culture cultures don't realize. They're sort of underlying assumptions and they're what they accept as an underlying uh, truth or fact and how that or or things that they simply have never thought about and how that influences and makes people unwilling to question um, public policy or public practice or medical practice. So in this country, people somehow think circumcision has always been with us. They think it's normal to cut off a normal body part. Mm -hmm. And so therefore, when studies come out or when people go abroad and try and sell this practice, Mm -hmm. because it's not, the United States is the only country uh, with the exception of, of two countries that were sort of colonized medically by us, South Korea and the Philippines, mm. the only country that practices infant circumcision mm. on healthy newborn infants. Mm. And we, but, but we so, we, we're so unmoved by it, we're so used to it, mm. that when we hear that our doctors and our researchers are out there selling it to the rest of the world, mm. We don't blink an eye. Mm. And and the reason for that is that in our culture and in our country, we don't assign any value to that part of the male body. And that comes from uh, decades, actually, mm. of, of circumcision being practiced in medical settings. And the majority of American men, the vast majority of American men, uh, do not have their foreskins. They don't have their normal uh, body part. And the vast majority of American men and women have never even seen Mm. a foreskin. So we can't possibly appreciate what it means to individuals and cultures to propose um, removing it Mm -hmm. from people who do value Mm -hmm. it and do have it. Mm -hmm. So these African studies, these so-called African studies on HIV, are the latest in a, a, a series of um, a quest, essentially, mm-hmm. to justify a practice that is um, uniquely American. You know, as you, uh, as you were mentioning about aid, I mean, in light of the recent tragedy in, uh, tragedy in Haiti, um, and, of course, uh, aid workers are out in force to try to help people uh, there and elsewhere around the world, this uh, this uh, practice or this philosophy this uh, will be used maybe to try to say, well, uh, maybe you should be circumcised down here and uh, in, in other places Circumcision well. has become a, a multi-billion dollar industry internationally. It's, it's a billion dollar industry in the United States. It's a hundreds of billions of dollars industry mm. internationally. Mm. The thought of spending um, the resources, the medical resources, on cutting off people's foreskins in countries where you still don't have clean medical facilities, mm. good water, where women die in childbirth, where children die of diarrhea and malnutrition. And we have mobilized dozens and hundreds of doctors with billions of dollars of medical equipment, all produced and mostly produced in the United States and sold at a profit to to attack the penises of minority men throughout the world Mm -hmm. is really a, it it boggles the mind how this is being perpetrated. And I predict we'll look back on it as the the rate of AIDS AIDS will continue to be a plague. Mm -hmm. Circumcision will not prevent AIDS because we know it doesn't, because if it did, you wouldn't have AIDS in the United States where, where at the time AIDS appeared, most American men, of course, were circumcised. Um, so over the, we're going to find that it does no good. In the meantime, many men will have been um, 
mutilated beyond the simple loss of their foreskin. There will be accidents. Mm -hmm. People will die of infection. And they'll be deprived of a healthy, pleasurable body part that uh, would enhance their sexual pleasure for the rest of their life. And we are doing this and proposing it with absolutely no regard for the consequences. Yeah. We were talking with founding executive director, George Ann Chapin of Intact America. We're talking about the issue of circumcision at the moment. Uh, George Ann, since you've um, been on the, on the hustings, you've uh, appeared on the Today Show, on, uh, on television, MSNBC, and um, newspapers, uh, been in Boston, Washington, here in New York. What has been your experience in, um, in discussing the issue in the uh, in big media? Well, you know, it's fascinating because the big media continues to buy circumcision as a as a normal thing mm-hmm. and devalue the the male foreskin. Uh, but on a one-on-one basis, it's really quite extraordinary how if you can spend a few minutes with somebody mm-hmm. and just talk common sense, like, okay, we're talking about removing a healthy body part mm-hmm. that God or nature, depending on mm-hmm. your belief system, mm-hmm. put there. Mm-hmm. It's part of the normal body. It's part of the normal sexual experience. We would not cut a similar body part or any body part routinely off little girls. When you introduce the conversation that way, there's often the light of, of and there's, there's an enlightenment mm-hmm. that happens. Mm-hmm. Once somebody starts to think of this as, uh, think of the foreskin as a normal body part, think of its deprivation as, a, as an invasion of the human body, that's the beginning of the conversation. Um, interestingly, the Today Show segment... Was it, was it was quite fascinating, and you can actually see it on, on intactamerica.org. There's a link to it. The end of the segment had the two, uh, the, the interviewer, uh, actually, who does, whose face does not appear, I, I think, in the, mm-hmm. in the segment. We had a long conversation afterwards where he expressed his uh, discomfort with mm-hmm. circumcision and, mm-hmm. and his and his thankfulness that he had had daughters and had not had to make the decision. Mm-hmm. This was a... American journalist. Mm. At the end, the two hostesses on the Today Show had a conversation about circumcision that showed they both were profoundly uncomfortable with the topic. Mm. And they both had sons and they had both circumcised their Mm. sons. I find it interesting that on an individual level, people are very uncomfortable, very, people laugh, Mm. they they avert their eyes, Mm -hmm. they think, they try to put on on people like us, Mm. people like us who think this is a a, a bad, Mm -hmm. you know, thing Mm -hmm. to be doing. Mm Um, that, that, you know, I've, I've had people say to me, you know, why are you interested in this? You know, mm. you must be really weird mm. to be thinking sure, about sure, this. And sure, I said, sure. well, you know, to me, the really weird thing mm. is the people out there, um, cutting, cutting off cutting this up, body, body part, parts. you know, uh, off a newborn, healthy newborn baby. Mm. So we have a, <laughs> we have a societal, um, norm, mm-hmm. which is to, alter male bodies Mm. but on an individual level people are really understanding that this is that this is something they need to think about Mm. once they start thinking about it it becomes very difficult not to see that this is something we would never do to our girls right we wouldn't do to women that's right and then they just need some information. Mm-hmm. I mean, they need to know that the foreskin is not something to be afraid of, right. that it's also not an incidental, you know, if I hear this little flap of skin one more time, mm-hmm. I, know, I just roll my eyes, right, but right, right. that there are lots of body parts we could remove to avoid disease. So we could we could remove teeth to avoid carries, Cav- right? Cav- yeah, sure. We could remove noses sure. to avoid skin <laughs> cancer. Noses are the primary site of skin cancer. Oh, uh, All these things sound totally ridiculous to people. Mm-hmm. We could remove the Ears. trigger mm-hmm. finger right. of little baby boys right. born in poor urban families right. so that they'd be less likely to shoot a gun in the right, future. Right, right, right. We could amputate right. toes right. to avoid ingrown toenails. Right, right, right. Now, all of these things sound absurd, but why is it not absurd to remove part of the penis um, to make it easier to clean or to avoid disease. Mm-hmm. And, and anyone who would continue to you know, hear all these arguments and continue to say, well, it's okay, really just doesn't know the value of that body part. Mm-hmm. And I think we're making a big difference. I really do. I think people are starting to see. You know, Shelton, we've collected um, nearly 20,000 signatures mm-hmm. on our petition to the Centers for Disease Control. Mm-hmm asking them to please not recommend infant circumcision, mm. 
we're not so naive as to think they'll recommend against it, but mm-hmm. we're asking them not to recommend it. Mm-hmm. Based on studies in sub-Saharan Africa, mm-hmm. we've had thousands of letters generated to the task force on circumcision of the American Academy of Pediatrics, thousands of letters from, from Intact America um, members mm-hmm. who are writing through our website. So, and and you'd be hard pressed to find thousands, let alone twenty thousand American men who are going to go thank their doctors right. for cutting off uh, part of their body. Mm-hmm. Uh, in fact, I don't know of any. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't think so. Uh, you also were on the, sh- on the show with uh, Nancy Snyderman on MSNBC. Right. Now she's a medical doctor. Right. Um, and what was that like? Because what was that conversation like? Well, it, it was interesting I, because she uh, had started the segment by saying that she had had her son circumcised, mm. which was interesting that no one asked her, and she started the segment mm. with that, mm. which certainly reflects a bias. Mm. Um, mm. There was another pediatrician on the show, Dr. Laura Jaina, um, who kept talking about parents needing good medical information. Mm. Uh, the good medical information out there that she seemed to be referring to was that circumcision has some kind of health benefits, Mm -hmm. all very vague and unspecified and decades into the future. (laughs) So there was a clear bias on that show toward circumcision Mm -hmm. as being the healthy, normal thing to do. And, Mm -hmm. of course, we know that's that's not true. Mm -hmm. The other thing I should just mention, I know I'm going on and on, is the rest of the world isn't buying it. So the United States is, is using the HIV studies in sub-Saharan Africa where the incidence of circumcision is very, very high and most of the transmission is heterosexual. We're using it to suggest that what we've been doing to baby boys is fine and maybe we should do more of it. The British, for example, are having nothing nothing to do with it. They are saying, um, in fact, I, I actually found an article when I was preparing for this uh, this show on the BBC where a sexual health expert for Britain, uh, Dr. Mahoney, said that uh, the U.S. has an obsession with circumcision mm-hmm. being the answer to controlling sexually transmitted infections. And, and I think, and, and none of the European countries where the men are, where boys are left intact mm-hmm. and, and men are almost all intact mm-hmm. and they're doing just fine and they have better health status mm-hmm. right. than American sure, men sure. and they have lower rates of sexually transmitted infections, the same or lower. Mm-hmm. There's no evidence that circumcision on an epi- in an epi- epidemiological mm-hmm. level affects the health of anybody. Yeah, yeah. Um, so they accept by exposing people to risk. So they're not buying it. Mm-hmm. The Danes aren't buying it. The Norwegians aren't buying it. The Swedes aren't buying it. The French aren't buying it. The Germans aren't buying it. Mm-hmm. These are all countries that have more sophisticated medical system than we do. Mm-hmm better health status, Mm. they spend less money, Mm. and people are healthier Mm. for it. Mm. So we just persist with this Mm. in the U.S. Mm. in an effort to really promulgate what we've been doing all along um, as part of the medical industry. Yeah. Before we go to the break and before I take some phone calls, I want to ask you about AAP, the AAP, the American Academy of Pediatrics, excuse me, Every 10 or so odd years, uh, five years or so, they uh, uh, work on the issue of circumcision. And um, uh, they used to at one point uh, recommend now, uh, recommend now, at one point they didn't. They're coming up with another study very shortly. And you've been at the conferences, you've been there with Intact America um, presenting the uh, other point of view about the issue. Do um, you have any indication what, which side they're going to come out on? Well, we don't. Uh, they, you're right. They're revisiting their position. There's a task force, and it's actually headed by a New York City health official, uh, Dr. Susan Blank, mm-hmm. who's part of the city health department. She's the chair of the task force. She, uh, in the Washington Post, um, gave a sort of cryptic discussion, a cryptic description, I guess, of mm-hmm. of the possibilities of the um, – what the committee would would do, mm. and uh, there's really nothing you can draw from it. She sort of says it might say nothing, it might say something, mm. it might say do it, it might say don't do mm. it. Uh, either there's a smokescreen being set up there, or they really don't know what they're going to right, say. Right. It's clearly a political issue. I believe sincerely that American doctors know that circumcision doesn't prevent AIDS. Mm-hmm. They know that. Mm-hmm. 
I also believe they know they have a big problem if they're saying that you should cut off every little baby's foreskin so that if that baby boy engages in unprotected unprotected sex 20 years down the line with an HIV positive woman, he'll have less of a chance of getting HIV. Mm -hmm. They know that the rate of transmission from male to females is actually higher in men who are circumcised. Mm. There are the same studies, the same group of studies that show that female to male transmission is reduced, mm. has shown that male to female transmission is increased. Mm. They know it has no impact on, on transmission in male to male mm. sex. They know, of course, it has no impact on transmission through bloodborne mm. uh, vehicles such as um, uh, intravenous drug use. Mm. So they know they have a problem. I really have no idea what, what their plan is. My guess, if I had to, is they'll kind of stick with the wishy-washy statement they say na- they have now, which says that it's parents' choice. Mm. Of course, <laughs> you and I know <laughs> it shouldn't be the parents' no, choice. No, it it should, should be, be right. the owner's choice, exactly. the owner of the body. Exactly. And since a little baby boy, a healthy baby boy, can't make the choice, it should be left to that That's right. child till he's an adult to make the decision. Exactly. Yeah, no, it's, which, <laughs> parents' choice, yeah, parents' choice to do a lot of things with children these days, mm-hmm. which, which are uh, sometimes illegal, too. Um, we're on WBAI um, 99.5 FM in New York, Schultz and Walden. The program is Walden's Pond, and we are here every Sunday between 1 and 2 p.m. here on WBAI 99.5 FM. We discuss health, culture, politics, so much more. We're talking with Georgianne Chapin. She's the executive director of Intact America. Uh, and an uh, uh, organization dedicated to protecting baby boys from the harm of circumcision. Um, we are, we'll be taking your phone calls uh, for George Ann at 212-209-2900. 212-209-2900. Coming up at 2 o'clock will be a... Uh, I see someone in here who's uh, in a birthday suit, and is, uh, he's ready to uh, have a big party at 2 o'clock. So Ibrahim Gonzalez will be here at 2 p.m. Uh, he has his three-piece suit on. He's looking good. And uh, he's got, I think he got a live band coming in here too. He'll be celebra- celebrating his birthday on the air at 2 p.m. So don't miss it. Anyway, we're here. We're celebrating ourselves at uh, 1 o'clock, 1.30, to be more precise. We're going to come back with, uh, after a little interlude and uh, take your phone calls at 212-209-2900. We're talking about the issue of circumcision. Uh, we, we're revisiting the issue again after an uh, uh, interval. Uh, we have uh, George Ann Chapin of Intact America here. Uh, she has been active, indeed very active, uh, ar- around the country uh, and on television and in newspapers, uh, presenting, uh, uh, pr- protecting, trying to protect uh, children and uh, infants from uh, this uh, procedure, which uh, continues here in this uh, in this uh, country. Uh, unabated, and uh, so we're um, Intact America. Intact America is trying to put a halt to it. Uh, their website, by the way, is intactamerica.org. Intactamerica.org. We'll be right back with more Walden's Pond here on WBAI. Stay with us. One thirty-one is the time here, and Eastern Time here in New York City, WBAI ninety-nine point five FM. Shelton Walden here, Walden's Pond, here every Sunday between one and two p.m. One and two p.m. We discuss health, culture, politics, and so much more. You can call me off the air at two one two two zero nine two nine eight four two one two two zero nine two nine eight four. Email me at sheltonwalden at gmail dot com. Sheltonwalden at gmail dot com. We're talking with um, George Ann Chapin who is the founding executive director of Intact America. It should be noted that she is also an attorney and bioethicist and also a healthcare executive. And um, we, she's been uh, 
working very hard on this issue for, for quite a long t- period of time. And the organization Intact America, which she heads, is dedicated to uh, ending and educating the public about uh, the issue of circumcision in this country. So uh, we want to open up the lines to you. Um, any thoughts before we go to the phones, Georgiana? Anything you want to say before we go to the phones? Well, you know, we, we are absolutely dedicated, Intact America, to ending this custom and, and shedding the light of day on what's done behind closed doors. We also want to promote the value and the awareness of the normal male body. Just as we don't have to do that for women and girls, right, because it's against the law in this country mm-hmm. to, to carve up girls' genitalia, uh, we're horrified that the rest of the world does it. But we really do not understand what's involved uh, in, a, in an infant male circumcision or what is lost. So Intact America, if you look at our website, we have considerable resources about the foreskin, about the normal male body, about the function of the foreskin, a protective function, a function uh, for sexual pleasure, and uh, really uh, the foreskin is, is just part of a healthy body. Okay. Very good. We're going to try to get through as many phone calls as we possibly can, so I would appreciate if you keep your comments brief, questions brief. Uh, turn off the radio when you call. Let you know your first name and where you're calling from. And we're going to go right to it with George Ann Chapin of Intact America here on WBAI. The program is Walden Spawn on this Sunday. And you're first up here on WBAI. Go ahead. Yeah, hi. Um, isn't that circumcision just it was like always like a religious thing, like Muslims and Jewish always did it. Who's this calling? And where are you calling from? I'm calling from New York, Manhattan. And what's your first name? Lucky. Okay. Hi, Lucky. Um, well, yes, uh, circumcision is a long, uh, a, a very old religious custom. And yes, uh, Jews and Muslims have done it. In fact, there's a lot of, uh, of evidence. Uh, but they, that- they, they always practice that. Uh, well, cer- uh, certainly for many years, and there's a lot of evidence that it was actually a, um, a it ev- evolved from infant sacrifice, and it became a sort of lesser form of infant sacrifice. As a medical custom, however, it really started in Victorian England and America in the middle of the 19th century, when um, the attitude towards sexuality was uh, was that masturbation was an evil and, and an illness. And doctors started circumcising boys and girls also, by the way. They, they removed girls' clitorises when they were, when they masturbated because they believed masturbation was evil and caused all kinds of other terrible consequences. So it wow. was advocated as a way of reducing masturbation and lessening sexual pleasure. Well, from what I read in the past, I mean, I'm going back maybe, I even read this 10, 15 years ago that the practice started in America when, doc, when different doctors from other countries and religions, when they started going to the medical field in this country, then they started the whole circumcision thing because American doctors, European doctors here in America, they never, ever practiced that. Europeans don't do it. We never did it. It's just Arab countries, Jewish states, they always, always did it, always. I don't know any Europeans that have ever done it, their families or anyone. Even I know a lot of Chinese, they never practice that. That's, that. It's true what you're saying, that other cultures don't practice it. However, it did start in Victorian England and America, um, and it, not as a religious, not as a carryover from the religious practice. Certainly at this point, it's become a uniquely American custom. Even the, the British don't do it anymore. Uh, and it's, you know, the the medical profession is multi-ethnic and from various religions, and certainly it's being promoted in this country and carried out by populations other than Jews and Muslims. In fact, yeah. this, this is really a Christian country. Thank you thank you for your call. Appreciate your calls. Move on. Uh, 212-209-2900. Go ahead, please. You're on the air. Hello? Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi. Who's, Shelton. Who's uh, this? My name is David. I'm calling from Long Island. Yes, go ahead, please. Uh, I had a question for the uh, the lady. George Ann Chapin. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes. I was wondering, um, you know, this is, to me, this is such like a, a unique, uh, kind of topic to be fighting for. I was, I was just wondering, how did she get into it? Um, was it a, was it something personal or was it something that, that, uh, her work b- brought her into? Okay. Thank you. Good question. Um, and, Thank you. and also, yeah. does she, does she focus on any, uh, female genitalia mutilation issues. Okay, thank you. Thank you. 
Hi, David. Let me answer the first, uh, the second question first. I certainly deplore female genital mutilation. We don't really have to uh, worry so much about it in the U.S. since it's, there's a federal law and many state laws against it, and it's not something that we carry out every day on on baby girls in hospitals. You can go to jail for doing for removing any part of a baby girl's genitalia um, for religious or medical reasons. So my involvement in infant male circumcision really evolved over over the years. My awareness of it, I have a I have a background in cultural anthropology, and and for decades I remember thinking when I would hear about how the horrors of female genital mutilation, I would think, well, we do that to boys. Why don't why don't we do that to boys? Why aren't we thinking about that? Um, Personal involvement, I, I was aware in my, even in my childhood of a couple of family members who as infants had botched circumcisions and mm. had mm. to be taken back to the hospital or back to the doctor. Um, I think though I just saw it as a, before I saw it as a human rights issue and as a bioethical issue, I really saw it as a common sense issue. How could it be that half of all newborn babies needed corrective surgery? It just didn't make any sense to me that you would need to take a, you would, you would nurture a baby during pregnancy and worry about having a wonderful birth and think about the potential of this child and at the same time lop off a body part. It just didn't make sense to me. Then as time went on, I started exploring as I, I became an attorney and I started reading and researching more and talking to more people and I, saw it for what it clearly is, which is a bioethical violation. It violates all the precepts of bioethics and also is a human rights uh, violation, just as female genital mutilation is a violation of the rights of the of girls and women. Mm. You know, Georgiana, I had, uh, I've had uh, a couple of times, I had uh, Dr. Margaret Somerville mm -hmm. from Canada. who is right. Yeah, and she... Uh, she spoke at uh, uh, the NOSER conference uh, back in 98. I was there and uh, uh, took the stance that this was an assault. On uh, She put actually put it as, as I believe she said it was a criminal assault mm -hmm. on, on a child and uh, that we need to protect boys uh, that, you know. And so, um, uh, you know, like like you said, I mean, a lot of people who really study the issue from an anthropological point of view and an ethicist point of view will come to the conclusion that this is really wrong to do. Yes, yeah. yes. Um, let's uh, move on. Uh, two one, thank you for your call. 212-209-2900 for George Ann Chapin. And you on the air. Hello? Turn off the radio, please. Okay, all right. We got to move on. Uh, WBAI, you on the air. Hello? WBAI, you on the air. Hello? Am I am I on there? Yes. Who's this calling? Um, my name is Ibu, and I'm from Senegal, yes, Senegambia area. Yes, go ahead, please. I'm just... I'm you know, I'm just baffled how Westerners really try to decide what people do with their bodies or what have you. You know, in, in our culture, if you're not circumcised as a man, you, you, you're even afraid to tell everybody you're not circumcised. You know, it's a cultural thing. You know, we all cannot be alike. You know, some of us believe in it. And, you know, it looks very pretty. You know, I'm being honest. You know, this is, I'm not a joke society, you know. Who is this lady to tell who, you know, what cultures do what, you know. In some parts of Asia, they put rings around their necks to make their necks long and all kinds of things that cultures do for whatever. You know? I, I understand. There are enough, there, there are enough problems here to, 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 to really um, to, 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 to redress. You know, all okay. kinds of ills, you know, racism, okay, this, racism. Okay, sir. You know, it's one big issue here in the U.S. Okay, and, um, sir. Nobody talks about it, you know. Okay, sir, let her respond and then we can have a little back and forth. Go ahead. Well, I, I certainly deplore racism also. Thank you for your question. Um, I'm not telling anybody, any individual adult male, what they should do with their body. What I'm saying is it should be the choice. We have a set of human rights precepts that have been embraced by by most countries in the world that say that that talk about individual autonomy and we don't permit people to go cutting in general except for this issue to go cutting body parts off of other people would you tell so, our jewish brothers and sisters I mean brothers to 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 not circumcise you know especially those of the orthodox type what we say is that it should be the child the child is not born with a religion in its blood people can choose 
what to do with their bodies. He, cannot, and he what, or she cannot, he, he in this case cannot make that decision. That's right, but he'll be able to make that decision when he's older. The Jewish people who are in, the, there, there are lots of Jews in the intactivist movement, and they say, uh, we, we, we grappled with this actually at Intact America. We grappled with whether to discuss religious circumcision. And I actually uh, was more agnostic about what to do about that. And, and Jewish members of the movement have persuaded us at Intact America that 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 baby boys and girls of all religious backgrounds deserve anyway, the, deserve been, the same we've protection. Been, we've been told enough by the West. And we haven't gained anything from it. You know, if anything, we have to run from our countries to come here because of circumstances, you know. You're right. All that is related to colonial... Uh, but let me ask you a question. Can, can I ask you a question? By Westerners. Okay. Let me, let, the question would be, if, if, you did, if you're from a, a culture that does not circumcise, right, <laughs> and that you leave your children intact, I would deplore the idea that Americans or any other or any other culture would come and tell you to start cutting off your child's genitals. What we are saying at Intact America is we respect the individual autonomy of, of children and of, and of adults. And if people want to um, have tattoos, if they want to scarify their faces, if they want to do any other kind of bodily alteration, it should be done by someone who makes that choice, him or herself. We don't well, oppose it, circumcision of of adult males who want to ha- make that choice themselves. That's their business. What we oppose is the involuntary, the forced circumcision of any individual, male or female, of any age. People should be able to make the decision themselves, keep their bodies intact if that's what they choose. Okay. Thank you very much for your call. Two, one, you're talking about George, we're talking with George Ann Chapin. She's the guest here in the studio of Intact America. And Shelton Walden here, Walden's Pond. You're on the air. Hello? WBAI, you're on the air. Hello? <laughs> okay, all right. We have our first. Uh, well, WBAI, you're on the air. Hello? WBAI, you're on the air. Hi, Walden. What a brave topic for you to, to, to challenge. I didn't uh, foresee that of you. Well, I've been doing it for 15 years here. So, uh, oh, okay. Uh, this, is, this is the first time you've listened to the program about this subject. But go ahead. What's your name? Yeah, I'm um, David. I'm from uh, Manhattan. Yes, go ahead, please. Um, I, in 2003, my sister had a baby. I called her up to report that, you know, I suggested that she not circumcise her child. And um, there was a great pushback from her. That uh, mostly for cosmetic reasons. So I discussed it with some of my girlfriends here in New York, and they all had that same pushback. And I was like floored. I did not expect it. Then I saw Sex in the City. There was an episode when Charlotte was dating a man who was uncircumcised. She was grossed out. All the women were grossed out. She convinced the guy to have a circumcision. Then he started becoming a male whore because he was in such demand. So I'm saying to your guests here that you are uniquely qualified as a woman to have uh, this discussion uh, for us because I think, and I submit to you based on my experience, that it's a purely cosmetic reason just to attract women. What do you have to say about that? I'll listen off the air. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Again, uh, cosmetic and cultural preferences and cultural aesthetics, what we think is beautiful or not beautiful, um, doesn't really, it's really not a justification for violating an individual's autonomy. So in cultures where circumcision is not the norm, nobody's grossed out by an intact penis. They see that as a normal penis. In cultures where, you know, it it would be like performing breast implants on every little girl so Mm. she had big breasts because that's the American ideal. Or removing tissue from breasts at a time, you know, in a decade like the 70s where flat chests are, Mm. are, um, you know, preferred. You're absolutely right. It is cosmetic surgery. Our job is to say the normal human body deserves respect. If, if the United, the United States at this point has an intact rate for newborns of about 45%, that means that almost as many people are choosing to keep their children intact as to circumcise. As that continues to increase, as the intact rate continues to increase, people will become more accustomed to seeing a normal intact penis. I would, I would ask the question, if, if a, an American woman was with a man from a culture that preferred genitally altered women, um, 
she would think that was horrifying that that a man would suggest to her that she go have an operation on her genitals Mm -hmm. because he thought it would look better. Well, you know, I think it's horrifying that we would do that to little baby boys, that we would make an assumption that um, they're going to be more popular or cuter or, you know, more desirable or less gross, as you say, mm. because they've been genitally altered at birth. Mm. Let let a, a young man decide that for himself. I know, uh, of course, you know, because I talk about this and because of my role at Intact America, you can imagine I have frequent conversations about this topic. Mm. And I've never, ever met a young man who, a sexually active young man who's intact, who... Um, who's sorry about being intact. If he's sorry about being intact, he can he can go have surgery. But if he's sorry about being circumcised, he can never get back what he's lost. Mm, that's true. Thank you for your call. Let's move on. We've got a lot of calls here, Georgianne. And um, you're next up on WBAI. Go ahead, please. How you doing? My name is William, and my wife's pregnant. Yes. And Where are you calling from? I'm calling from the Bronx. Yes. And my wife's pregnant, and we're talking about whether we should get the boy circumcised or not. Mm. I'm so glad and, you called, William. Uh, don't do it. Don't do look, it. Not, don't do it because you can always, the boy can always make the decision to do it later. It's very painful. It's an ugly thing. If you could see it, go on intactamerica.org and watch the uh, video. Watch Dr. Dina Dell, who's a, okay. and, and take a look at it. Read the material there. And I believe that if you read it carefully, you will see there's absolutely no reason for it. And it's, you know, I'm sure you want all the best for your son. Uh, yes, I do. But uh, he's my second question because I thought there was a health reason involved, but I understand there might not be well, now that you're telling me that. But my other question is now, with the baby, what if she wanted to abort the baby? Hmm. What about the rights of that baby? Can, can, can you help me with that? Like, <laughs> does that child have any rights? We don't, just, you know, we don't. Um, the Intact America does not have a position on abortion except to say that we, we oppose all forced surgery on anybody. <laughs> so right, that's what, but, she, but we and her argue, because she doesn't want the child. I want the child. Oh, really? And I have no rights. What rights do I have as a man well, to keep this child? Well, uh, again... So what we, rights does this child have to live? If, mm-hmm. if I mean, you know, I mean, science says it's not a child until it's, like, born, right? Or when it's six months old. Right. Well, 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 I mean, who's to so, say what was what when science is proven wrong in 10, 15 years or 100 years? I hate it. So you have, you have a double struggle. You have a struggle to save your baby, and then you have a str- struggle to save your baby's foreskin. So you have all my sympathy, um, <laughs> and thank you so much for calling. Thank you very much. 212-209-2900. WBAI, you're on there. Hello? WBAI, you're on there. Hello? Hello? Yes, hello. Yes, hello. This is Adrian from Flanders, New Jersey. Yes, go ahead, ma'am. Yes. Um, George Ann, is it? Yes, George Ann Chapin. Go ahead. You're on the air, ma'am. Go ahead. Fine. She said, quote, this is, after all, this is a Christian country, unquote. I must take uh, great pride in saying that that is an incorrect statement. Uh, this country was founded, one of the main reasons was for freedom of religion, which is secured for us in our Constitution. Uh, as an attorney, uh, you should know that. I, I'm sorry, Adrian. Yeah, I was, I was, that was a very quick comment. What I meant was that, and I, you're absolutely right, you're 100% right. What I meant was that J- Judaism and Muslim are not the predominant religions in this country. So when we talk about circumcision, we're not talking about uh, it being car- circumcision as carried out in American hospitals is not a religious custom. It's not perpetrated by Jews and Muslims. You know, they're a tiny percentage of the population. You are 100% right, and I, I really don't want to get off on this. I, you're, this is a country where it's supposed to be a secular country. We do not allow medicine to carry out religious practices, and that's really what I meant. So right. thank you so much thank for, for pointing that out to me. WBAI, you're on there. Hello? WBAI, you're on the air. Hello? Whoa, hello, Mr. Shelton Walden. Yes, yes, who's this? Uh, my name is Alexander. And from, you, you calling from? I'm calling from Austin, New York, sir. Okay, go ahead, please. Yeah, question, please. Uh, more a uh, sort of question, but more of a comment. Um, uh, circumcision has been done for uh, thousands of years, uh, you know, um, marking males in this uh, ceremonial fashion so that they can be identified. And I think that it's interesting that it's done in this country not as a religious practice, but as more of a uh, mechanical one that we uh, 
we don't uh, legitimize through religion. Um, but I, I, I think it's interesting because um, it's it's a practice that uh, the people partake in uh, widely. And, You're uh, right, and, and so is uh, female genital alteration. It's been around as long as male genital alteration. There are a lot of customs that have been around a long time, uh, you know, stoning women for adultery, um, that we don't that we don't subscribe to in this country. We we strive toward enlightenment, don't we? We we sort of strive even even in the last fifty years or sixty years since the Second World War, when all these atrocities were carried out in the name of science, we have been striving to to clarify our values and to line them up and be more consistent in what we do, you know, make it more congruent with what we believe. So if we believe in autonomy and human dignity and the value of the um, body and people's right to make their own decisions, then we look at, we should be looking at things we do, the practices that we engage in and, um, and and changing them if they violate those values. Corporal punishment, you know, people. I mean, people have had the right and diff- over history to um, to beat their children, to even to kill their wives, and we don't subscribe to those customs anymore. So so you're right; it's an old custom, but that's really not a reason to allow it to continue. All right. Thank you for your call. Uh, I'm going to take one quick call, and then we'll have to have a closing comment. WBAI, you're on air. Hello. WBAI, you're on here, quickly. Shelton, excellent show. Uh, Thank you. Quick point, I'm calling from Long Island. Yes. Um, one of the things that wasn't discussed so far is the um, the cutting off of the, the foreskin does not allow, the, you know, the male private part to develop normally because it's cutting off a lot of veins and arteries and yes. things like that that Absolutely. restrict the blood flow, and, and you're left with a bad scar. Yes. Um, and males that are circumcised or physically slightly smaller. I read something on the Internet about some kind of a survey. All right. Well, uh, we have a question for our guests. Um, yes. I'd like to know, um, are, are there anything being done to educate the parents in the hospitals where they're most likely to be at the point where they're making that decision? All right. Thank you. Yeah. What we're trying to do really is reach people before they get to the hospital. Um, and by, thank you so much for pointing out the, the anatomical facts about circumcision. You're right. We didn't have a chance to get to that, and mm-hmm. you're 100% right. Um, so what we're trying to do is give people information before they get to the hospital, before they, you know, the, the mother is, you know, lying there relatively um, exhausted from a delivery, and someone sticks a consent form in front of her that says, I agree to circumcise my son. Um, that's a terrible time to think about circumcision from, for, the, uh, for the first time. So all of our efforts are to spread the word and get material out there, get it to parenting groups, prenatal educators, midwives, doctors, nurses, so that people know the facts about circumcision before they have to before they're presented with a form to sign. We believe that people know the facts about circumcision, about infant circumcision. If they can see an infant circumcision, they understand what's involved, that they will choose to leave that baby intact and let him make his own decision. Georgiana Chapin, we, unfortunately, we, we, unfortunately, we are out of time. The website, please. And the, uh, uh, it's www.intactamerica.org. Please check it out. Uh, you can contact us. Get on our mailing list. We'd be delighted to hear from, uh, hear your comments. Uh, you can reach me at gchapin at intactamerica.org. And uh, we're closing up. Thank you so much, Shelton. Thank you very much. It's always a pleasure. Always uh, so much information in too little time. But George Ann Chapin, founding executive director, executive director of Intact America. Intactamerica.org is the website. You can find out more information about uh, the issue of circumcision and uh, get educated about this most uh, vexing of American issues. Shelton Walden here, Walden's Pond. We're here every Sunday between 1 and 2 p.m. to discuss health, culture, politics, and so much more. Call me off the air at 212-209-2984, 212-209-2984. Email me at sheltonwalden at gmail.com, sheltonwalden at gmail.com. Until we meet again, we will be on next Sunday at 1 p.m. with another edition of Walden's Pond. Take care of yourself, and that's it. And take care of your health. Very important out here. Educate yourself. And uh, stay tuned next for a wonderful program with Ibrahim Gonzalez. It's his birthday program, birthday special. He'll be on at Radio Libre between 2 and 4 this afternoon. So stay tuned.
And God willing, we'll be back next Sunday with another edition of Walden's Pond at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Have a terrific week.